So this is ba -ba, the Stork Crib Changer. There we go. Now it's in focus. This is a Stork Crib Changer. I'm just kind of making this quick little video. This is what it looks like before. I didn't really see anything useful online to show you how to do this. So let's see if I can figure it out myself. I wanted to mention that it does come with instructions, as you see here, but this is literally it. I'm not missing a page. I didn't lose anything. This is the entirety of telling you how to convert it. So let's see what happens. Just in case this step isn't obvious, I've removed all of the normal things that are inside of his crib. Now I'm just removing the bottom part. I don't know. I guess you call it like a crib skirt that I made up. I don't know. Seemed like a good idea at the time. And his mattress. And judging by the picture, you're supposed to remove this portion, which is the outside rail. You can't see because for whatever reason, I cannot zoom out. But you're supposed to remove that outside rail. And then, of course, lower the bed and add the additional pieces. I'll pull out the additional pieces. They're literally just under the crib. I didn't want to risk losing them, so I just kind of tucked everything under there out of his field of vision so he wouldn't be tempted to play with anything or grab anything, but it's all underneath the crib. All of my extra pieces that were under the bed. Yes, I did pause to dust them all off because they were gross. I've never seen dust so thick. Anyway, here are all the extra pieces. Here is the crib. And now to get to work. So the first thing I'm going to do, because I'm not going to be able to film this, this is on my phone, is all those little pieces right here that attach the bed, or the mattress part, I should say. I'm going to remove all of those first, just to clear that out of the way, so I can hopefully gauge what I'm doing easier. Because as I mentioned before, this is the entirety of the instructions for converting your crib into a toddler bed. So you're supposed to be able to use this in three steps to go from this. Oh, yes, I did film the whole thing to this. I'm not mechanically inclined, so maybe that's my problem. But just in case you're part of that group, hopefully this helps. So success, took me way longer than it should have. Well, also note, this is easier with two people, but if you're determined like I am to see if you can get it done with one, press on. Totally forgot to record. So then you have to remove these screws, which hold this part on. And then there's one more down here. And they're really long. So if you feel like you're unscrewing for days, probably are. I personally just like to get that part out. I can twist it way faster with my fingers. Hopefully this recorded part isn't too long. And then you simply boop, remove it like that. And there's corresponding screws on the other side. I just wanted to put this in here to kind of be a marker as to where it is. Word to the wise, if you're like me and you did not assemble this crib, I figure I should let you know, <laughs> although it makes sense now that I think about it. You have to open the drawer all the way, lift it up, and then let it just kind of drop on its own. And ta-da! There's the last screw, which you can't see because I didn't put anything in there for you to be able to see it. Ignore the giant finger, but that's where it's at. So this is the last screw before the whole thing just comes apart. This is more of an honorable mention. As you can see, there's a little part moving as I'm wiggling the screw. So that little piece will just kind of fall out. So don't be freaked out. If you're like me and you like to keep all your parts, just know that that little part's going to fall out. You're not using this part of the railing, but if you're like me and you want to keep all your pieces, just know that that's going to fall out, so look for it. For the instructions, I have located the guardrail 
and the safety rail for the toddler bed assembly. And if you look at the instructions, there they are. Safety rail and guard rail. Sorry, that's fuzzy. Tip I found the hard way. Step 11. Focus. See if I can get it to focus first, sorry. There we go, step 11. Step 11 is very useful. Why? Because step 11 shows you how to get the guardrail on. So, if you're like me and you did not realize that, don't just immediately turn to the 12th step for the toddler bed, which makes way more sense because, well, I'm personally going to put him in that toddler bed before I put him in a day bed. However, I sort of understand why they did this. It's way easier to see this by itself and this by itself rather than making it all one. So it is a lot easier to just give you three simple steps. So I get it, but it's slightly annoying. So the same bolts that you took to remove the railing in the first place. So you see how it is now empty. So the same bolts that you removed with that, make sure you keep them because you're going to need all of these in order to put your guardrail on. And you're also going to need this, which I'm not gonna to pretend to remember the name of, but you need this, those little pieces that I told you kind of fall out. Those are important. Definitely don't lose those because you're gonna need those in just a short while. I would also like to add that I will be reattaching the mattress part. I don't know what it's technically called, but these I will be reattaching now because per the instructions for the daybed portion, it does have a note that says, before converting crib to daybed, make sure the mattress base is in the lowest position. Also, if you're like me, you notice that Shore is missing the E. Anyway, just a little nerdy wording for you. They're once again assembled. And I would actually say that so far, despite the instructions, the most annoying part is just getting this platform screwed back in. It wasn't hard. I did it by myself. I didn't have to ask for any help, but it was annoying. So I'm getting really close in on this particular part. So those little pieces you have to make sure are lined up correctly so you can get your screw in all the way because that's going to help secure it. I'm not going to keep screwing because I'm just going to have to unscrew it so I can actually do it on the bed. But I just wanted to get a close up that this is what I will be putting into the bed, which those little holes. There we go. Now it's focused. Those two little holes underneath are what you're going to be screwing this into. So like I said, I just wanted a close up of this so you can see those are to help you thread it through properly and to have something to grab onto. Okie dokie. So bottom railing is on. Yay. And it wasn't nearly as bad as I expected to be with those little things to thread. It actually was super easy. So yay. I would like to bring this feature out because I think it's pretty cool. So this perfectly lines up with the holes. And the nice thing is you can have it on this side, which is where I will be putting my sons, or you can put it over here. Now, the only reason I'm not putting it over here because I originally wanted to is because I know my son, I know my child, and he is very much like both of us. So he will more than likely, once the mattress is put in here, it'll of course be lifted. So he will more than likely climb on this to hang off of that. And that's what I don't want to happen. So that's why I'm not putting it over there. Although visually speaking, I would have preferred it just so I can kind of snuggle in with them, etc., etc. I mean, not crawl all the way in. I'm way too big for that. But, you know, just kind of snuggle in with them for bedtime stories and whatnot. And Paristo Changer, just like that. It is on. Don't worry. The part you hear shaking is not this. It's actually that little piece over there in the corner. 
everything pretty much says not to over tighten it. And I definitely have to resist the urge because I am definitely one of those people who were, you know, kind of learned to crank it all the way, but you don't want to do that here. So that's the, that's the rattling you hear. So it's nothing to be afraid of. It's just not over tightening anything. And I will give you a once over once I put his bed back together and clean up the mess. 